Welcome everybody here. We really appreciate you coming to Washington. Until seven months ago, I had spent all of my 20-year career in the private sector, including as a CEO and chairman of both public and private companies. So I know firsthand how the best ideas, the best practices combined with the right technologies can really transform business performance. And now that I'm in government, I strongly believe that these same powerful ideas that make companies better can improve government productivity and service quality. The President and the administration are committed to improving the efficiency and quality of government services, and we really need your help. Um, based on my thorough review of your homework, um, I am convinced that you can really help us achieve better results for the American people. After the President speaks, we will be going to breakout groups, and in those groups you will have the opportunity to work together to highlight the key lessons that government can learn from the private sector and implement. We'll then reconvene here for our closing session. It's now my honor to um, introduce someone who I have the privilege of working with every day and is the leader of our team at OMB, the Director of the Office of Management and Budget, Peter Orzag. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you all for coming here to participate in today's forum. As we close out work on the fiscal year 2011 budget, we are wrapping up a process through which we make difficult choices about where to invest the nation's resources. We're going to have a lot more to say about the budget in the weeks to come, but today we're focusing not on how much we spend, but rather on how well we spend it. Are the programs in which we are making investments delivering on what they promised? Is an initiative in one department being duplicated in another? And are we delivering services in the most efficient and effective manner possible? In evaluating these questions, the President made it very clear from the first Cabinet meeting onward that the traditional way of doing things in Washington would not be tolerated and that government must be modernized. In response, we've taken a variety of steps. We launched an ambitious effort to reform government contracting, increasing competition and bulk purchasing, and reducing no-bid contracts. Through this initiative, we're on track to save $17 billion this year and $40 billion by the end of next year. We have put forward an aggressive effort to reduce the $100 billion in improper payments made each year. That is money that the government pays out in error. And we've initiated a rigorous new process of program evaluation so that we can find out which programs work and which ones don't, and thereby streamline the successes and eliminate the failures. And in last year's budget, we put forward more than 120 cuts and reductions, totaling more than $17 billion in programs that were duplicative or ineffective. Many people in Washington thought we'd never succeed in obtaining these reductions because the programs all have powerful backers. And yet this morning, in evaluating the final results from the 2010 budget process, the Washington Times, not widely known as an administration-friendly newspaper, <laughs> concluded, and I quote, President Obama notched substantial successes in spending cuts last year. This type of effective management is not only an administration commitment, it's also an obligation that we owe to the American public. And that's why all of you are here today. The productivity gap between the public and private sectors is substantial, and the longer we allow it to persist, the larger it becomes. That's why we're committed to a new business model for government, where technology and information systems enhance efficiency, where funds are invested in initiatives that work and not on outmoded programs that don't, and where customer service does not take a back seat to bureaucracy. I know that I speak for Jeff Zients and his whole team when I say that we want to learn from you during this forum and work with you over the coming weeks and months so that we can leverage technology to close that productivity gap and give the American people a government that is more efficient and effective. 
With that, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to introduce the President of the United States.